We are following breaking news in San Joaquin County. Evacuation orders are in place from the Corral Fire. This is a live look right now at the scene. To give you some perspective, this is 580 near Corral Road. And so this is where it looks like the fire may or may not jump 580. This has been burning for more than eight hours now south of Tracy. We know that many people are dealing with power outages. It's luckily down to the hundreds it was in the thousands, but right now it's down to the hundreds. Let's begin with the latest for evacuations. People from Corral Hollow Road to south of where 580 and Interstate 5 joined together are under mandatory evacuation orders. It's this entire area in red. So those west of the California Aqueduct also have to evacuate. The evacuation orders stretch west to Alameda County and south to Stanislaus County. 580 is closed in both directions through the evacuation zone because of all of the smoke and zero visibility. We also just got new word from Caltrans tonight that 580 is actually closed now. It's extended from Alameda, the Alameda County line all the way to the Stanislaus County line and that State Road 132 is closed from 580 to State Road 33 because of that wildfire. So that closure just extended within the past few minutes. If you do need a place to go, there are two places set up where you can go to evacuate yourself or your large animals. There's a lot of farms and ranches in this area. A temporary evacuation point is open right now at the Larch Clover Community Center in Tracy. That address is 11157 West Larch Road. A large animal shelter is set up at the Manteca Unified School District building. That address is 2271 West Luis Avenue in Manteca. We have live team coverage tonight. Meteorologist Dirk Verdorn is tracking the winds as they push those flames forward. KCR 3's Catalina Estrada is near the fire line from the north with the very latest updates from crews on the ground. Catalina, we do want to go to you first. So right at 1058 when we last saw you a few minutes ago. It looked like the flames were getting really close to 580. What's going on now? Yeah, Brittany, and I'm just going to give you guys a life look. They're literally right next to Interstate 580 right now. You can see those big flames just moving um, very quickly alongside Interstate 580 and those crews just kind of following the flames, trying to battle and stop them from moving. They're kind of moving in the wind's direction right now. Um, that wind hasn't stopped since we last saw you guys a couple of minutes ago, but you can see how big those flames are and also the smoke coming up. Um, if you remember from our hits earlier today in this area. Um, there wasn't a lot of smoke and we've just seen it picked up pick up in the last half hour and it has been moving very quickly. You can see that fire truck there trying to put out those flames so they don't move any faster. Now we can smell that smoke. We can see those ashes in the air that you were mentioning earlier today and just take a look at those flames. Um, that is very um, that's on the off ramp. So if someone was coming um, from Interstate 580. They were about to get off on uh, Corral Hollow Road. That's the off ramp uh, they would take and you can just see right now crews um, that are stopping those flames for spreading even from spreading even more. So we are seeing a lot of resources being put in this area right here and it's just been moving very quickly. I mean, you guys can just see it in these live images, Brittany and crews expect to be out here just continuing to battle these flames and this fire for the rest of the, the night and we have seen it in the past hours just how quickly it has grown and how these conditions have helped this um, fire just spread out very, very quickly. Live in Tracy, Carolina Estrada, KCRA 3 News, back to you. And when we saw you at the very end of the 10 o'clock newscast, the shot we were closing on, it looked like there was a, a member of the fire service possibly lighting some sort of backfire. H how many vehicles are lined there? Does it look like there's folks who are lighting those backfires? backfires or was that water they were using? We're not quite sure. So we're actually pre we're pretty far from when they from where they were earlier. Right now we can just see these two fire trucks uh, following these flames, uh, Brittany and just crews are starting to spread out more earlier. We did see around seven, eight trucks focusing on that other area down on Interstate 580. But right now they're just following these flames. Um, I believe they could be throwing some water just to put out uh, the flames and make sure it doesn't spread even more. But right now in this area, it's just those two trucks. They're battling that 
that fire and we have seen a couple of firefighters on foot as well. So they're doing everything that they can just to make sure that they stop this from spreading. Back to you, Brittany. Yeah, and keeping themselves safe as well. That's not a great place to be in that lower position. I know that Dirk is hopeful that maybe 580 or Corral um, Road can be some sort of a block. So I guess we'll just see what happens when those winds kick in. All right, Catalina, we'll be back with you in just a few minutes. We want to go now to the south side of the fire. That's where KCRE 3's Orco Mana is live. Orco, you're right near all of those road closures. So now 132 and 580 are totally shut down where you are. What are you able to see from your vantage point? Yeah, Brittany, we were able to move a little bit further south. And the big question that we had before we got to this point is, did those flames we saw earlier jump Interstate 580? I can say they have not fully jumped. We here behind me over my left shoulder, you can see that there are the flames there that we saw earlier, but they have not jumped westbound Interstate 580. So that is the good news. This is the median of the interstate where you can see those flames and some of that smoke coming up. And we earlier we saw quite a bit of a fire presence, fire engines driving through this area. It's calmed down significantly in this area, but if we take a look to my right, you can see some of these embers and some of these smaller remnants of the fire on this side, the south side of Interstate 580 still glowing and burning. The wind as it picks, picks up tends to make these small little fire areas a little bit larger, but from what we're seeing right now, they look pretty okay in terms of the fire crews that were out here earlier taking care of them but again you can see small little fires in this area and there are some residential properties not too far from where those little spot fires are and if we turn over here and walk this way over this overpass you can see some of those emergency vehicles we know caltrans has blocked this whole area off we are only able to be here because we are allowed to be here with our media credentials to show you what exactly is going on here but we know that caltrans has blocked this whole section we know that down below we were showing you interstate 580 that has this whole section of interstate 580 is blocked. We know CHP is taking care of those road closures as well. The only vehicles that are driving through this area are emergency personnel. You can see one vehicle here driving. And I did speak to a CHP officer um, a little bit earlier, and we were asking about the evacuation orders that are in place for this area for the residents here and also the country club, the golf course that is that are that's in this area. And they told me that everyone, according to their knowledge, was able to make it out by themselves or with assistance from the sheriff's office so that is some good news but again we are seeing some flames it's significantly better than it was several hours ago but we are seeing some flames here and if we look further beyond the flames in the median here you can see some of that smoke rising up that's closer to where carolina is right now we can see the red hue coming off of that smoke meaning there are flames down there as well so as this fire continues to grow and fire crews try to get a handle on it we know that the winds are a concern we were seeing the winds pick up every now and then so it really is an all hands on deck situation for fire crews across the region trying to contain this fire which at last check about 30 minutes ago from caltran excuse me from cal fire was 10,000 acres large reporting live along interstate 580 or Comana kcra 3 news it's really hopeful to see and hear your good news that 580 at least it hasn't jumped in that spot which is really really wonderful news that everyone was able to evacuate and your shot definitely Definitely looks a lot better than what we saw even a few minutes ago. It looks like there's even less smoke too. So Orco, thank you so much for that update. It's kind of a glimmer of hope for us at this point. We want to bring back in meteorologist Dirk Fedorn. It's it's interesting, Dirk, looking at the smoke where Orco and Catalina are and how every few minutes one of their shots has a bunch of smoke. Next few minutes they don't have smoke, the other has smoke. You can see embers in one and not in the other. But it's just how this thing is it's going. It's just shifting. you got those winds that are shifting that smoke around in the fire as well. But again, great news where Orco was reporting. Again, this is the area that I was going to be most concerned about because this is where we had some of the stronger winds. Again, pushing all the embers and the flames in this direction. So all the winds have been moving basically from the west to the east. And so this would be of greatest concern making its way over uh, I-580. So it looks like that has not happened. At least that's the report that we've had so far. And also 
also locations to the south. Again, this area along Vernalis Road, those uh, the houses and homes that are down there look like it's pretty good. I didn't see a lot of active flame down there. It's more to the north and to the north. Again, it's still going to be a great concern, but it looked like even in that time where we were listening to uh, Carolina that uh, the, it, they were starting to get a little bit better control of these flames here. So the focus has really been on this end of the fire, but still that's not everything. We still have the flames that are further back and moving to the south as well as moving slowly to the west. And so this is not going to be done, but at least it looks like that it's at least the progress, the forward progress of this fire to the east has been slowed, if not stopped at this point. So future cast, let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on with the winds and what we can expect as we make our way through tonight and into tomorrow morning. So what we're taking is the Tracy Airport again, wind speeds forecast. These are sustained winds, so the steady winds upwards close to 20 miles per hour. That means that the gusts are going to be between 20 to 30 miles per hour. And that's what we've been seeing in the surrounding areas where we still have some reports coming in with wind speeds. I've been seeing the wind gusts between 20 to 30 miles per hour. Now, as we progress into the morning for your Sunday, here we are midnight, the wind's still there. We still have that flow coming from the west. No big changes there. But as we progress past three o'clock in the morning, we start to see more of this flow coming from across the valley. And that's going to start to uh, slow down the winds, at least here at the base of the hills. And then we see that strengthen a little bit more. It's not a very strong wind, but we can see things kind of weakening here with this westerly flow over the mountains and into the valley. So we see those winds really start to drop off. And then as we progress through the morning, as we get past 9, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, we see the winds turning more to the north. And that's what we're going to see as we get into uh, the afternoon on Sunday is more of a north wind in this area. So firefighters are just going to have to, again, uh, take into fact uh, the shift in the winds and be able to change what they're doing and hopefully be able to use that to their advantage and help to get this fire out. Back over to you. Dirk, thank you. Let's show you that evacuation order zone. Again, it is the entire red area. So that north end is Corral Hollow Road. That's the area where Catalina is, and it stretches all the way down south to where 580 and 5 merge into I-5. So this is that entire evacuation zone on both sides of 580 at this point as the winds just push this in new directions.